Ja. Okay, we are going to start now. Oh, don't press the button. My name is David Bangasnen. I have good ballot size. My English is not perfect, but try to avoid public laughing. That's a uh, proof of my bad humor, as my colleagues know here. Now, a little bit laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is our second breakfast seminar here in Finland and there's also coming in Umeå after ne after two weeks second <coughs> next next seminar stay on line
Uh, we have a streaming link here, and our partners from Norvala Folkhälsan, uh, Westerbotten uh, Lenslandsting in Swedish side, and uh, Umeå University and Rice Interactive is behind the link. You are welcome, and also if there's other participants behind and why why uh, this streaming link. Our title is today is individual motivation factors. What makes both athletes and daily exercises smooth? Today we are talking about our powerful muscle brains. I hope we'll hear and discuss today about some interesting things regarding motivation factors among athletes and also daily exercises and so-called sofa potatoes. Maybe think about sofa potatoes, this is maybe the key factor to activate them. Our audience here have possibility to ask and give comments freely. For your you behind link, I wrote my email address here. Send me your email. I'll check my email quite often, and I, I'll convey your question to our under discussion here. But to the point, we'll have first the lecture, and after that the panel discussion. And our initializer today is Susanna Valkiakari from. Wellbeing Factory, and you have with Petteri work with motivation profiles now seven, eight, ten years. Wow, little bit experience. But Susanne, stage is yours. Okay. You're, you're welcome. Okay. okay, thank you. So, this is a very, very challenging topic motivation factors. And it's been very, very widely studied and researched. Uh, we are here to offer one perspective to this topic. And um, before I go on to what our profiles might offer, um, I have taken here a couple of uh, slides about motivation, just to get our brains tuned to the topic. And uh, uh, perhaps also to um, explain a little bit of our thinking uh, about the motivation. And then, um, as, as Joko said, I'm really happy if you interrupt me and comment and ask and object, <laughs> because that, that makes this uh, so much more lively. Uh, my background is in adult education, so I'm a certified adult educator, and uh, Petteri then has a background in s sports and professional sports, so that we then have combined our experience and knowledge. And um, of course, have had the pleasure to develop these profiles together with, for instance, the great professional trainers here in Kuortane. All right, okay. So um, um, this is a huge topic. But just to get on, on the same page, um, I think that's why it's been uh, researched so much, because it is why people behave in certain ways and why do they do some things and don't do some things. Um, uh, so um, first of all, we can think about there is an, a stream of thought that thinks, OK, first of all, motivation can be a, an attitude towards something. And if we speak about couch potatoes, for in instance, um, um, their motivation is often reflected in their attitude towards exercising. Um, and that's in a very, a very generic, and uh, as we all know, attitude is something that's quite uh, difficult to change also. It can be very deep-rooted. And with couch potatoes, we have used our profiles and um, uh, help them get a little bit forward, so to say, uh, in a way, helping them to get to the bottom of why their attitude towards sports might be negative. But we will get 
to that a little bit later. Uh, with uh, athletes, of course, this motivation as an attitude is usually uh, good towards uh, sports because they are athletes. Um, then uh, some uh, differentiate a situation-specific motivation, and this again is, is perhaps more relevant with um, uh, not couch potatoes so much, a little bit also with them, but also with a daily exerciser, so to say. Because um, with them the challenge might be that they are motivated when there is a trainer or there is a group or something once a week, twice a week. Uh, and not when they are alone at home and they should do this um, daily exercise in taking the stairs instead of elevator or, or things like that. So then their situation motivation is low and, and they don't exercise. Was I able to make clear this difference between sort of generic ex uh, motivation and then situation specific? And I think the personal trainers um, are cashing in with this uh, situation specific motivation because what they are trying to do is, is trying to be so wonderful and, and so motivating uh, so that uh, the, the daily exercisers or couch potatoes need them and need to go back ag again and again and again because um, they are their motivators and then we are not talking about motivation. Um, positive psychology, uh, Seligman has brought uh, a flourishing uh, a, a term into, into this discussion about motivation, and he's saying that we are motivated to do some things that we are good at. We get this um, experience of being successful, uh, and, um, experience of, of, of um, being the true selves, and so on. And... Um, the sad thing is that to be able to use your strengths, you should know what they are. And we have, in our 10 years of time, come to the conclusion that not all people know what their strengths are. Um, especially if we talk about couch potato or even a daily exerciser. They don't know what is their strength in doing sports. And with our profile, we have helped them by giving a tool to be able to s uh, reflect, is this my... And uh, in Ospo City, uh, we have worked with obese people who never really exercised. And uh, when they did this profile and we said, okay, this is your strength in, in exercising, they were like, wow, I didn't know I had any. And uh, because strength is usually um, linked with... Um, being good at running or jumping or whatever. Um, we have also uh, worked with a um, uh, football team, or a couple of them, but one who is in a league. And it was also interesting to know that some pro uh, professional football players have never stopped to reflect in this sense what their strengths are. They know their physical strengths, of course, but they don't know what their sort of mental strengths are. And if we talk about professional athletes, and we get to, we need every percentage, so we also need the mental uh, potential. And this is a, is a tool to reflect with the, with the coach, professional coach, Uh, satisfy needs, I'm not talking about Maslow's hierarchy, or I'm talking about Daniel Pink's work, what makes people thrive. And here, um, this might be more uh, related to couch potato or daily exerciser, a need of belonging. I go to do the sports because there's a nice group and I, I belong somewhere. Or a need for a, a status, that could be a need for athletes. We all have a need to have a status, to, to feel good about ourselves, to, to have good feedback, to, to, to have skills and so on. But um, just some, I think, a little bit more recent uh, motivation studies. Then, um, of course, this comes from Frank Martela's work. Uh, in in uh, He's talking about a lot of uh, uh, motivation, but he says that we are mixing up motivation and control 
or we are mixing up uh, self-discipline, grit, willpower with, with motivation. And um, the uh, top tier here is, is uh, intrinsic motivation, which I believe we all here understand. Um, I enjoy the activity, don't need any benefits as a result. And I've been thinking about with athletes, do they actually have intrinsic motivation? Because when they stop their professional career, how many then still go on doing the sports? But we have a panel here, Ma perhaps we get some uh, answers to that. We have discussed with some athletes who used to compete, and then when they stopped, they started gaining weight, and they started, you know, st they stopped altogether. And I, I was just wondering, but of course, probably the best uh, athletes do have intrinsic motivation. Um, more often, it is um, a goal to get to the second top tier that the result is so important and so valuable to me that I do sports even if I don't always enjoy it. And this is again a challenge with daily exercises and couch potatoes that they don't know, um, they, they, they haven't uh, found a goal that would get them up from the sofa and go exercising. Because the magazines say that you have to have a measurable goal a factual goal, uh, a, a strict goal, and only then you succeed. So many magazines say so. And there's no positive effect combined with that. And with our profiles, we can tell that that's not motivating to many people. And these are the top bottom tiers um, are not motivation at all. Um, if you learn to control, punish, and, and reward yourself for doing sports, it's, it's not about motivation. It's, it's you've learned some dis self-discipline. Mm, then um, what we, when we go through this profile, want to differentiate is that, okay, um, what is the motivational factor? Is it all about that? Or is it more about how not to kill? <laughs> the motivation that you have. And um, if we look at the um, left hand here, I discussed this with Petteri when Petteri uh, played football in, in Germany and, and Holland and actually he stopped his career because he didn't have motivation anymore. He had all the skills and all the prospects of becoming a really, really good one, but he just the motivation wasn't there. And because motivational factors change during the time. So um, he was perhaps not anymore the young guy who just loved football and was motivated doing it. He became an uh, adult. And the motivational factors probably would have changed. But there was no coach with whom to reflect upon that. Nobody uh, stopped and discussed, and he didn't have the self-leadership skills to do that on his own. And uh, so then he stopped. Um, and then if we look here, um, we have worked with some uh, athletes that uh, how coaches can help uh, support the motivation of athletes so that um, they get all percentages of performance into use, all potential into use. Um, um, so with uh, couch potatoes and uh, sofa pota um, daily exercises, the motivators are very, very different. And um, many of them have not found them. <laughs> They think it's, it would be nice if I was healthier. It would be nice if I was fitter. It would be nice if I could walk faster. But that's not a motivator because it doesn't make them inspired. It's just a wish. Um, and then once they start every after New Year's or after every summer to burn out the sausages they have grilled during the summer and the beer they have drunk with it, they have a motivational factor. They start, but then something happens. So they haven't been able to maintain the motivation 
because they haven't exercised in a way that uh, does that. So <laughs> to put it very simply, we would be m we are motivated when we think there are benefits for us about doing something. We get a good status, we, we get a good feeling of, 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 of performance. We whatev w it's different for everybody. And everybody would have to um, define the benefits that are truly important for me, that actually get me going, that gets, gets me through the tough times, that gets me give my best. And no other people can do that for you, but can help you find them out. And our tool, our profile, is one way of giving hypotheses, suggestions. Okay, could your motivator be in this area? It seems that, that this area is very uh, natural to you, very you prefer that. Is, is this where we start looking for it? Um, then, of course, we have to believe that, okay, those benefits we want, and this is the activity that will lead to the benefits. There is no other easier activity, and this is what we is problem with couch potatoes. So if, if the doctor says to them, okay, you have a danger or, or threat or risk of diabetes too, or you have a risk of uh, some heart uh, problems or whatever, so please start exercising. But for them, there is another activity, taking the pill, <laughs> which competes with this activity. And um, so there should be more time then to help them understand that this activity has, has much more other benefits as well. Um, and then this self-efficacy belief, I know I can do it, and I am autonomous. This autonomy is immensely important, and we could have a whole seminar about aut autonomy. Um, and then these positive feelings, even um, uh, matter-of-fact people have <laughs> feelings <laughs> which are actually stronger than anything else. Okay, so what has this uh, preferred style has got to do with motivation? And um, a couple of things about that. So preferred style is, is about cognitive styles. It's about taking in information, processing information, um, communicating with a coach, communicating with somebody. That can be either motivating or, or, or dismotivating. And this is piece of information. And um, this is the same information that has been uh, given to us in a different format. It's ex exactly the same information. But um, just an analogy, because this is, uh, everybody knows this, so let's think that the coach is trying to help and coach somebody, athlete or a personal trainer, coach potato, and their maps don't meet. So uh, however motivated this athlete or coach potato is, and he starts, uh, there's already a mismatch in communication. And it's very difficult to strengthen my motivation. I will show here one more example. Um, this is translated, for example, into running. So we have four main styles. And we are always asked, OK, after you've done your, we've done your profile, do we know which um, sports motivate me? Am I a runner or am I a um, karateka or am I a skier? And we say we can be any sports you like. It's just how you process and take in information about it. So up, if we start up with the mountain guy, uh, his uh, style and is uh, very autonomous, flexible, challenging. Um, we come to that a little bit later. So he could run if he uh, organizes running events so that he's always able to challenge himself if he wants to, if he decides to. He wants uh, to have experiences, and we have found often that, um, uh, the s what are the snowboarder, snowboarders, 
um, we have done to the top fin Finnish snowboarders, they, they often have a lot of this style in them. And uh, also some um, who sail alone or, or, or there's some experiencing and challenging and always a moment of surprise, you don't know how what happens next because they, they get this drive when they have this uh, momentum of risk and not knowing and, and, and like that. So you can run like that if you want to, if you really want to. You can organize your running like that. And then there is the, the red style going to the, the right, um, a feeling type, okay, I, I'm motivated, or my motivation is not killed if I run in with a good mood, with the fun people who support me and inspire me. Uh, we can find a beautiful forest or beach or have a dog with us or listen to the music or, uh, or whatever, but then, that type of running will support and strengthen the motivation we have at the beginning. And down here is the type who, who, who prefers this treadmill because it's, it's stru structures, I can choose if I take an interval or fat burning or manual or whatever, whatever. I can choose a program that it will guide me. I will know that I'm uh, running with the correct pulse and uh, I have the feeling I know what to do. I know exactly what to do. There's no gray areas that trouble me and, and um, no surprises and it, it will be go really well. And then there's the last type who uh, wants to measure everything and, and have this optimal performance based on science, based on research. Uh, it's realistic. Um, this, this is the thing really, really data-oriented, and also somebody to spar. So this is about um, how to do so that you don't kill uh, your motivation. Um, so there are these linear type of guys, and this is really traditional coaching. First, a goal that's specific, measurable, realistic, um, then we measure where we start at, what's the gap, what's the delta, what's the plan, when we measure, how we analyze, really factual. And for this other type, it doesn't have any motivational, so any aspects that motivate. This, this will kill the motivation. And um, this is the type that most couch potatoes and daily exercises actually are today, they have the green area, it's, it's their vision. It's too optimistic, it's, it's, it's a story, it's a vision in their head, it's, got it's a story most often. And then they start somewhere and it's okay to go and try new things and, and try that and do flexible, now I'm interested in that. I don't need to go linearly, I'm, I'm learning while I go and Sometimes I want to stop and reflect how am I doing, and I have a gut feeling that I how I'm doing, and that motivates me. And then I end up somewhere, and it's fine. I'm not disappointed because I learned along the way that this is the right goal for me. I would be very, very um, um, I would be very anxious if if at the beginning I was asked, please write down your goal, because I don't know, are you s why are you asking me that? I just, yeah. Uh, just to add, there are many success successful athletes who have this kind of profile, and they try to train as to utter the blue, green, and they are not able to give all the, the potential they have, if they have to train like this. Yeah, because... Um, but also, there are many couch potatoes who are like this, yeah. blue, <laughs> blue green. So, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> in, in both sides, you yeah. have both, yeah, uh, yeah, both yeah. people, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, please don't be... Uh, thank you, Petteri. Because we often think this is the right way. This is how you succeed. And, and that the thing is that they succeed in this way, for whom it is a preferred style, yeah. Okay, then uh, just a couple of more things. So, so mm, 
oh, one more thing I have to say, we team sports like football. And um, so there was a team, we just did it last um, November, and 75% were like this, and 25% were like this. And now if you think about team sports, because these two quite opposite styles don't automatically appreciate each other. They don't automatically appreciate. Quite often when comes pressure, they start to be frustrated with each other. Okay, it's like football. These want to do the tactics that were rehearsed and that were agreed. These want to be creative. So, okay, these complain that these start to be the s uh, solo stars and not do as, as planned. Or these say that, okay, they are st a stick in the mud and don't have any creativity when it's needed. Don't take any risks, but play safe. And these want to play aggressively uh, and take risks. And when they are this these two different types in the same team, the team spirits are not always the best. Can be, can be. Um, so when when a person gets the profile, uh, we are looking. We start looking uh, about motivational factors first, if they are not there, and. Um, 60% of people have two main styles in their profile. 30% have a three. And a combination then tells us a lot. Um, but then we start talking about how to leverage on their strengths. Because when they do sports in a way that they can use their strengths, they flourish. They have this wow feeling. And uh, one example I have to say that um, there was a, an experiment. Um, two teams need learned needed to learn to bowl. They had never bowled before. Okay, I don't know if bowling is sports, but I guess it's considered sports. <laughs> sorry, sorry if somebody's a bowler. Uh, um <laughs> so uh, they were given two strategies. The one team was given a strategy that after they had five days to learn it, and after each day, they stopped, and the other team had to think what had been their strengths that day, what they had, what had they done well, and what what seemed to be their strengths. They analyzed every evening, and the task was that the next day do more of that, D use more your strengths, and do more like that. The other team was uh, instructed to each night uh, analyze what they did wrong. So focus on what went wrong and where they failed and what they did then. And then they were uh, instructed to um, correct the mistakes the next day. You pr all know, after five days, the one who focused on strengths each night was so much better. There was a clear difference. And uh, this was an actual real test uh, in, in the United States. Right, uh, but you probably had time to read this, but... Um, from from these charts, we then start looking, and the thing is, we want to uh, provide this profile because nobody can motivate you but yourself. But with this tool, we can help the person think, okay, what motivates me? How should I be doing? And uh, uh, then make a plan, make a goal, uh, some instructions then accordingly. And then we, we actually know already what kills your motivation. And when we can tell that this to a person that, okay, this kills your motivation, please don't do it. <laughs> so then uh, self-leadership is, is really, really a key in motivation. And this is the last one. I will stop here. There are just a couple of words. There could be so much more. And since we most have at least two main styles. It's not that uh, straightforward. Actually, we've had um, some internationally top level athletes who have a yellow green profile as well. So you can have these two opposites styles in one profile. 
and and <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, but uh, at sometimes they are very sort of autonomous, rebellious even, and still they might need a routine, and they they somehow <laughs> it's very interesting. But I hope yeah, better. Yeah. You said that, that uh, many athletes, they have the yellow and green, which are opposites, and, and many triathletes have that kind of uh, profile. Once we were part in, in choosing triathletes for Team Finland, and, and they wanted to make our profiles, and they had a lot of help wi with that. And also there, we noticed that many of those triathletes, they are uh, yellow-green. You have the, the possibility to, to challenge yourself, to look in the future, in in long future, but then you also have that uh, self self uh, discipline which green brings with you. That that's that's very very nice combination. But of course, you have all all kind of combinations also with top athletes. Yeah, and perhaps the concluding uh, segment is that this is of course just one perspective to motivation, and uh, we call it a tool. So to help you identify your motivational factors and help you identify what aspects you need to bring into doing sports so that you don't kill your own motivation. And with athletes to get all the potential out. Yeah. Yes, if I look at those colors, I see myself in working life more like blue and green. But then if you talk about uh, sports and, and hobbies and, and recreational things I want to do, maybe it goes towards yellow and uh, red. Is there a contradiction or oh, am, I, am I a strange person or, 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 <laughs> or is that normal? Oh, thank you. That was a very important question because um, this is a cognitive style that's domain specific. And uh, with couch potatoes, this is so important when if I as a couch potato start to do exercise, I know myself only as a working person, so I might start as you with the green, and this is how I'm mo at work, and then I'm not motivated at sports. But sports is a totally different domain from work, so you might be different there. You might be motivated, and this helps you identify that. So this is not a personality trait, because personality traits are the same in all domains, but cognitive style and preferred style may change. That was a really important question. Thank you. So uh, we have done the work profile and the sports profile for couch potatoes. And for some, it's different. And for some, it's the same. So there is no way to know. Yeah. And uh, as you said, like it's it helps you to find your own potential. But it's good to point out uh, that it doesn't tell, the profile doesn't tell anything about your performance or exactly. the potential that you have in strength or endurance. Yeah. It just helps you to find the potential yes. that you have. Yes, yes. It is so important because uh, sometimes when we've done this with, with a group of like company people or somebody and they say, yeah, you had to say publicly that they are all as good, but uh, you can tell me what's the best profile. <laughs> and uh, we always say, no, there is no best. <laughs> they are all as good. You can succeed with all, yeah. Any other comments or <coughs> questions to Susanna? I have some here online. Okay. <coughs> and I, <coughs> I got a message also. I like to thank our camera and sound man, Levi Arbi. Our streaming good. link is working ver very good. <laughs> uh, do you think some kind of political regulation will be necessary in the future when it comes to inhabitants in the Nordic countries and for them to exercise enough? I heard some polit politics here in under breakfast. Maybe Tapio will yes, say something. Yes, I think that's <laughs> he's the first one to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Other other one also, but. Or perhaps we can discuss it in the panel. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. There's also a question of uh, how about the climate change, for example, how how we should take it. Yeah, yeah. Think about that. Yeah. And also how 
do you hope the collaboration between the healthcare sector and the sports sector will be changed in the next 10 years? It, it probably, uh, we have already some first pilots, as I mentioned, the uh, city of Espoo. So we have now for two years had a, a project with them that when a healthcare uh, professional uh, gives uh, the person a recommendation to start exercising, um, the person will do our profile and then there is, um, uh, the city of Espoo has these um, uh, instructors, liikuntaohjaaja. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, physical ex physical exercise, physical fe teachers. So then the person is uh, directed to them and they discuss this first and they make a plan according to this and they make a goal and so, but only the ones who have a body mass index above 40 get to do this at the moment because city of Espoo is really big so they can't afford to give it to everybody. But but uh, then we have with uh, occupational uh, doctors, we just had a big company, uh, international company, occupational doctors and nurses are starting to use this uh, in all Finland first um, for prevention, exactly prevention. And then also some uh, private occupational healthcare centers are using this at the moment for prevention, preventive work, yeah. Okay, a short break, we'll start our panel discussion. Yeah.
Yes, we'll we'll start, and I hope uh, from our audience, especially our ladies, because in our project we try to promote equality between men and women. You ask because there's some boring guys here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are like welcome. Here. Yeah. Uh, if we start a question, tell us shortly your background as athlete, or are you? Uh, so far, goats potato. That's also okay to admit. Okay, if I start, my name is Jussi Teurola, and I'm somewhere in the in between. I'm not a co couch potato, but I'm not a professional athlete. I uh, like to do sports, uh, maybe two, three times a week, uh, different uh, types of sports, uh, golf. <laughs> is my my favorite sport in summertime maybe skiing downhill skiing uh in the winter time uh occasionally i do jogging and 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 uh things like that but uh i'm maybe an average finnish finnish uh, person when it comes to sport uh, hello my name is olli pekka karjalainen and uh, i'm a former professional athlete, uh, three times Olympian and the European champion in the uh, in, in event of hammer throw. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, a former athlete, uh, and then I became a couch potato for, for many years. Uh, that uh, gives a hint about, uh, about my motivational uh, perspective in the, in the sports. But then uh, after a few years, I kind of like found the found the uh, sports again and uh, just for a hobby but uh, it certainly was a difficulty for me for for me to uh, to to have it back again but yeah yes uh, I'm Petter Korkala also a former professional uh, football player I played in, in Germany and, and in the Netherlands and I stopped with 25 uh, Susanne told about that and, and maybe later we go deeper in, in that uh, subject uh, but after I stopped my football career, I was one year I was couch potato, and 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 then I thought, oh, I have to do something because uh, sports has always been a lifestyle for me. So now after four knee surgeries, I'm I'm just going straight ahead. I'm I'm running sometimes. I don't like running at at all, but I know I have some healthy benefits uh, from that. That's why I do it. But mainly and and. What I like most is the race bike driving. That's something I, I where I can and blow my head and 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 and, and I, I just like it. But uh, then I have because I'm I'm very yellow person in our profile. I do a lot of lot of other things. I do some fitness. I do uh, TRX. I uh, I do kayaking. I do uh, different uh, kinds. I don't I don't have only one sport. So to I I like to drive everything. Thank you. And next, what motivates you in sport and what's the big thing in your favorite sport? Well, if I begin here, um, uh, for me, what motivates me in, in sports is it's always been the challenge, it's always been the competition. I've always needed the goal. I always. I when when I started the uh, the training season, I always knew that it'll it'll all end in the in the major championships where I want to be successful. And uh, after those championships, I I set a new goal for the next year's championships. So uh, so that was that was my rhythm when I was an w was an athlete. So I was really uh, my goal oriented. And uh, and. Uh about what motivates me in, in my sports event, it's the hammer throw. It's it, it it has been said that it's the one of the most difficult events in uh, in 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 athletics uh, uh, because it's technically so challenging. So so you're n you're 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 never ready with the with with the technical perspective in in that sport. So 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 again, it was a challenge for me to be better and better uh, in in that way and always. Of of course, uh, I wanted to uh, throw further uh, uh, every year, but but uh, 
towards the uh, towards the last years of my of my career that wasn't uh, possible anymore, and I had uh, all kind of injuries, and uh, and there there comes the other uh, other perspective because I couldn't reach my goal, but uh, goals, but uh, at the same time. I I didn't enjoy the sports anymore. I didn't have fun anymore with the sports. So that was the reason. Uh, that was the most important reason why I stopped the professional career. Not 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 the fact that uh, that the results got weaker, but the fact that uh, I I didn't enjoy it anymore. So. Uh, okay. Also for me, very important aspect is is achieving those goals. I I. I I gave it for myself. So I, I when I was a young uh, boy, I wanted to be a professional football player. So I trained for that, and th then I uh, I achieved that. And I was pl uh, playing five five years, and and somehow I lost the motiv motivation. There are many many reasons, uh, but but I, I lost it. But I, I achieved that. And and after my career, that competition. Uh, as you said, uh, uh, th this competition is, is still something competing with other people. It's still something which gives me motivation. Uh, whether I'm when I'm driving with my race bike, I, I see other people. I want to uh, uh, take over with them. I, I, I want to go faster than them. Or when, when we are playing pickleball, for instance, I, there's always this competition. It, it's, it's nice to compete with other people. I don't have to win every time. But of course, it's nice when you do that. But still, that feeling of competition and and, and doing sports with other people—it's it, it's something. It boosts me really much. Well, <laughs> first of all, enjoyment is probably the key factor for me. You have to enjoy what you do, otherwise, why 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 do sports or any other activity if you don't like it? But I I also think that uh, the motivation changes over time you know when you're young it's more about maybe external factors like uh, self-esteem and and uh, a pressure uh, peer pressure and and things like that uh, you want to look good maybe and things like those but uh, as older you get uh, uh, then the internal factors become more important like the health issues for example and and i personally i'm in the tran transition <laughs> to become old, so so health issues uh, are getting more and more important to me. Uh, the work work is requiring quite a bit, and you want to be healthy, and you want to succeed in your professional work as well, and then therefore you need to be in, in, in uh, good health, and uh, that kind of issues motivate me. When Susanna showed uh, the, the four, four styles of running, so I could really recognize myself as the combination of, of challenge and good mood. So that was the, the red and yellow. Uh, so maybe maybe that's those are the, the issues that motivates me at the moment. Some question from the audience. How about the role of the coach and instructor is very important in motivation. Uh, could you tell us some good or bad story about that? It can be a horror story also. It's nice to hear those ones. If better is. Yeah, okay. Uh, I have both. I, I think uh, I have both in, in the same uh, example or same event. Uh, when I played in, in Germany, I was uh, a second goalie. And then the first goal get a red card, so he was he couldn't play for three uh, games. And then the next game and, and uh, game and we were driving to the south Germany, uh, some seven or eight hours by bus. And then the trainer asked me to come sit next to him, wanted to have a talk with me, and he said to me, "Petteri, it doesn't matter." So it was my first first uh, game in in Germany, and he said to me, "Petteri, it doesn't matter." How good you are playing, Hannes will be the first goalie. It doesn't matter what you are doing. So, uh, I'm I'm very yellow. I'm very yellow blue person. Uh, so it kind of was a, a a boost for me. I wanted to show him that I I can do it. I'm I'm very good. And and after the game, I was chosen for the dream team of, of German 
uh, German put football. Uh, the Giga, Giga magazine, they every t uh, after every uh, round, they chose a, a dream team, and I was chosen for the goalie for that. So for me, that sentence, Petteri, it doesn't matter how good you are playing, you uh, Hannes will be the first goalie. It was a boost. I, I was I'm I'm such a rebellious guy, so it gave me a boost. On the other hand, if some, uh, if I, I would be a dream person, it would would have been a dismotivator for me and, and, and I think that would that I, I couldn't have played so good. Could I explain that a little bit? Yeah, so both both uh, yeah, both are in the same story. Well I think the most w when it comes to the coach, I think the positive attitude is is, is the, the biggest thing. I can see it when I look at my daughter. She's uh, her hobby is the horse horse riding, and and I can see some coaches who are very critical and and, and concentrating on negative and the mistakes. And then I can see some some uh, positive coaches who 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 really really uh, you know give positive feedback all the all the time and 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 correct the mistakes in a, in a positive way. So that makes a big difference, and you can see it when a when a child is wanting to go into the to the one coach's training more than the others, and and that's that's one way to really to kill the the motivation for a child uh, if the coach is too critical. Of course, if you go to the top level, you know then it's a little bit different issues, but uh, but uh, for most people, the positive attitude is is. Uh the biggest thing. I remember when I was a child and I was playing a so a soccer in a soccer team and my dad was a coach and, and I still remember because he was very, he's, he was more critical and requiring much more from me than from the other players and, and uh, of course we laugh about it now and but I, I still remember it and I thought it was so unfair uh, why I had to do more and, and, and I, was, I was not good enough uh, if I did the same and and uh, but but now when I'm older, I can I can a little bit uh, sort of show the same uh, things in myself towards my own child, which I try not to do. But uh, but uh, so that's uh, sort of in I, I I inherit those <laughs> those traits, I guess. <laughs> but no big trauma. But uh, that's something maybe not so smart to do when you're uh, when you're an uh, adult. Well, um, well, my sports, uh, the, the, the main sports was, was the hammer throw, but I've done uh, many, many other sports when I was a kid, um, team sports, individual sports. Uh, I think I had like 15 or 20 different coaches in my career. Um, and uh, I don't know, um, I, I really tried to uh, remember some negative uh, experiences, but I couldn't remember any th anything, so... Maybe I'm just a, a fool person that I didn't recognize the negative uh, sides of the coaches, or um, or I think I just happened to have really good coaches who were who were really uh, who were really focused on 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 what they were doing and uh, trying to help me or try to help my team uh, when when I was uh, when I was an uh, uh, an athlete. Uh, they all taught me uh, valuable things about life and about sports. Some some of them were really really hard on me, but, uh, but the way I see it, they they um, they uh, taught me th that was their way to taught me that you you cannot gain anything um, without without hard work. Um, so so that kind of uh, approach probably suited for me. Um, but uh, the most important coach that I have was, uh, of course, the uh, Arto Rinta, who was m who was my um, athletic coach uh, or, or or track and field coach in in Hammerthrow. We we started uh, doing cooperation when I was a little kid, so he, uh, and we we went the whole journey all the way. So he was my only coach in 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 Hammerthrow. So for for us, it was the uh, almost a lifelong project. 
and uh, and um, he was probably more like a you know, well not the father but at least a, a, a really close relative for me uh, instead of a coach. And uh, that journey that we did together is uh, is is really valuable, and it's um, it's it's something that uh, that is that is unique. And uh, we, uh, me as a as an athlete, because I was I was quite impulsive. I was I was I went from zero to one hundred percent really fast. And he was he was a calm guy. He was the more engineer type uh, type of guy. So so we uh, supported each other like characteristically uh, quite well. So, uh, so uh, that was a, that's that's an interesting story that uh, that should be uh, uh, should be uh, processed a little bit. And uh, what because normally elite athletes change their coaches at least a couple of times uh, during their career, but that even that didn't even cross my mind uh, during my career. And uh, and uh, yeah, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, no bad bad experiences, a lot of good ones. Everybody told me uh, something about sports, uh, different uh, different uh, kind of uh, mm, things. Uh, what you need to be successful. So. I still have one uh, example. I'm not uh, quite sure whether it, it's a good one, a positive or negative one. Uh, once in Germany, we had a Turkish trainer. He was also a national trainer for a Turkish football team. And the first time I met him, we were walking to the uh, training field, and he said, "Better, please come here." And all he only sa said, "Better, all the Finns they are barbarian." Nothing else, nothing else. That was all he said. And somehow I I, I couldn't find the connection with with him. <laughs> I, I tried my best, but uh, <laughs> I, I tried to ask how ma how many experiences he had with Finns, but but he just left it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe he wanted to boost me, my motivation, or, or I, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Good story. This next question I have heard from Tapio Korius. You can also answer if you want. Uh, what's your most memorable or captivating sport performance, and do you remember that emotional state you were on that moment? What kind of feelings? Well, if I begin, um, of course, all the major championships are. I can remember everything from there. All the all the feelings, all the smells, all the all the voices. Uh, we have been working towards those uh, those competitions for for many years, and then you're there, so of course you're really focused. But then, uh, then on the other hand, uh, for me, uh, I can st I can also remember some beautiful moments during the during the training camp in in, in Portugal where you s where you when you're about to have a your morning session the the weather is beautiful and 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 uh, you know that you're gonna have a good practice uh, during the next couple of hours so those m those moments are also really important for me so it kind of uh, under underlines the the fact that it's also the journey that is important so so um, but uh, uh, for me, there's not specifically one moment that is above everything. Uh, there are many moments. Every year, also the bad ones, they have taught, they have taught me uh, uh, a lot of things. So, uh, so uh, it's it's for me, it's it's always been more the the whole journey instead of one speci specific moment. Uh. I was I was uh, now thinking, okay, my, my career in, in, in the Netherlands, in Germany, or in, in a uh, youth national team, uh, whether there was some some special moments. But I think I have to go back to when I was 15, 16. I, I was uh, chosen for the first first team of FC Honka, uh, the first first goalie, and then we were in the first league. So it's the second second league. And we were playing a friendly game against against Hoi Ko, and and they were on the top top level in, in Finland, and we were really the underdog in that friendly game. And it was actually it was a game on one goal. So the Hoi Ko they were just pushing, they were just trying to make the goal, and and 
I, I was in, in a kind of uh, flow. I could, uh, I could, uh, I was just playing and, and, and taking those balls, and I could see the frustration of, of the, uh, the uh, on the faces of the players of Hoi Ko because they couldn't get the ball into the goal. I'm not quite sure in what kind of flow I was, but that was one of the most, most uh, nicest. Uh moments in in my football career i was 16 yeah just just si I, I was shown yeah I, I i could destroy the the dreams of the the, uh, the other players and, and and yeah it was it was so nice i was so excited i was so happy i was in a, in a flow yeah and that kind of moments you need as an athlete still i can remember that now i'm, I'm 52 and and yeah one of the best moments Well, for me, w the sport and exercise, it's about creating feelings and, and experiencing uh, wonderful things. And for me, probably the most memorable thing I had with, uh, with sport or exercise is about uh, car racing or driving. I don't know if you call that sport, but maybe just like bowling, it's considered sport in Finland, <laughs> at least. So I, I had a maybe 15 years ago, I had a chance uh, to drive Formula One car in in uh, Hungaroring uh, in Hungary, the Formula One uh, circuit, and and uh, about ten laps, uh, and that was something that I will never forget. And 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 at my heart rate was going probably two hundred. So th in that way, it's 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 hard to exercise, <laughs> but uh, that's something something uh, unique and something that I will definitely remember the rest of my life. Now, ladies, some question. Yes, we will take it now. I have uh, one question, and it is almost the same. Uh, how important is the success of the nation in, in sport events, and what you do like to change in our society and our politics to maybe promote more active lifestyle? one well maybe I start then uh, uh, yes I uh, I see it what was the question <laughs> yeah 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 it's I think it's very important of course for young kids uh, it boosts their motivation to start any kind of sport if if, if but but the success of course breeds uh, practice and and uh, people getting into that sport so it's very important and the other other part of the question I just don't understand why in in at least in fin Finnish society everybody knows that the exercise uh, is 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 in is an investment to the future but but in the government level it's also also seems like it's every time considered a cost and not an investment and and why is it so difficult to get uh, more, uh, for example, uh, sport uh, exercise lessons in schools? Uh, it's been improved a little bit in Finland, but there's so much more more to do. So so uh, there's a lot of talk, but very little action in that field, and and that's very difficult to understand because everybody knows how how much it's costing us in the future not to not to uh, be healthy not to do exercise not to not to uh, do sports yeah if i if i catch that that last one um uh we are uh we're always talking about healthcare but actually we're not doing healthcare we're to we're taking care of the sick and uh, and uh, that's uh, that's a huge difference that we and, uh, and a huge uh, uh, huge thing that we need to change seriously change in uh, in in our all, all of our minds. Uh, we probably all here understand the value of this of of this uh, healthcare or or the role of sports in it. But I'm not sure if if everybody does uh, in in the society, especially in the in the in the in the government level. It's 
it's uh <laughs> i mean when you're building a bridge you make the decision and then you start to build a bridge and you will have the bridge ready in two years and you can see the concrete results over there but if we're talking about the r uh, the results what you gain by by um uh improving the move improving the sports in in the society you can see the results in 20 years and that's a that's that's too long for the politicians but uh but uh but uh it shouldn't be that way and we we should r work even more harder to 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 uh get the message through the same thing with the uh with the with the uh elite sports or uh or or um as a professional uh, professional sports it's the it's one of the only things in the in in the world uh right now in in national and international level that seriously brings different kind of people together so so people are enjoying the 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 success of the national team people are gathering uh uh to watch the olympics in in a television no matter where you come if you're from finland or if you're from uh from a um, totally different part of the of the world from different part uh, different seriously different kind of uh, society or cultural background but they all enjoy the same sports and that's uh, that's a value that we should uh, we should we should uh, nurture uh, 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 and uh, and take care because uh, because um, there are not that many uh, things in the world that uh, that brings people together in in a way that sports does and um actually the uh, the st the studies show that um, 75 of percent of the of finnish people uh think that it's um that it's uh, valuable to uh, to have uh, success in uh, elite sports so so even in that perspective it's it's been proven so um again it's hard to see those investments from the government level to uh, to uh to uh, that that we have in uh, in um, in the elite sports, so so it's a it's a tricky question. Yeah, uh, I lived more than twenty years in abroad in the Netherlands and in in Germany, most of the time in Germany, and it was always nice to see when Finnish uh, athletes had had a lot of success. I could I I could always boost. It was good for for my uh, for for my feeling be because uh, Finland is so small country and, and they don't know uh, much about us and when Finnish uh, athletes had a success then we could be lift on a podium a li little bit so that that's very uh, important and, and uh, I, I like this when I lived in abroad and when I go to that uh, uh, healthcare system and, and society I think we would need more yellow people in the politics because yellow ones are those ones who can who look into the future and and uh, as you both uh, said that all those decisions which are made they are short term decisions and politicians whether they don't have the ability but I think they don't have the courage to make a long term decisions and and to invest more in supports more in in, in preventive supports would be so important for us. Thank you. Uh, okay, w one question. Uh, uh, let's go back to motivational things. Uh, what do you think? Uh, in in uh, Finnish sports policy, there has been a long-term uh, investment program to, to facilities, sports facilities. Uh, what do you think? Is this is this right way in in a national level, or is it uh, right thing uh, and right way uh, at the I individual level uh, to develop those uh, uh, nice facilities, uh, good equipment, nice technology, or so? How how big thing is this for uh, individual motivation in sports sportly uh, life lifestyle? I, I think it, it's very important issue to invest in, in the facilities, but still they are only kind of tools. I think the most important thing, or one of the most important things, is to invest in, in, in the people, to, to somehow to help them be motivated. 
into sports. The facility itself, it's not a motivator. It helps. It, 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 uh, it makes it easier to start with activities. It's very important. But I think only uh, if you have good fali facilities, it's, it doesn't uh, guarantee that the people also become active. Somehow you have to be able to make a switch between the ears. I completely agree what Petteri said, uh, but in a, in, in a place like, for example, Quartan Olympic Training Center, we can really see that when we invest something in the facilities, for, uh, for example, now we just completed a new, new football, baseball arena, and that will really uh, later on bring the, the also the expertise and the boost the whole, whole sport, so it will sort of create uh, a lot of good things when we started from, from building the facilities. So in, in that way, it's very important, but like I said, totally agree with you. It's, it's more like a tool to, to achieve uh, something, something else than an actual motivator. And I actually, uh, I, I agree with what you are saying. You need both, both of them. Not only one, but you need both. Some more comments? Yes, I like to thank our our audio team, Levi, and uh, and all of our participants. And I'll change my mind. You are not so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'll thank our spectators also behind the streaming link. Have a have a good day, and be active. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.